would say that the project came about uh, through a reflection on um, what is happening specifically in the United States, but globally as well in terms of um, the uh, kind of hollowing out of democracy where ostensibly democracies exist. Mm -hmm. uh, the difficulty in, um, for people in general to resist um, the power, the overwhelming power of corporations and the uh, kind of um, inherent corruption of democracy that this creates. In looking at some of these problems, I was led back to um, another moment in history, actually in Germany, when many people felt frustrated with similar kinds of situations. It was the period of the Vietnam War. It was uh, post-war Germany in the 60s and early 70s. There was a, um, an armed resistance group called the Red Army Faction. One of the members of the Red Army Faction, Ulrike Meinhof, became, uh, uh, an, after her death, a uh, figure who keeps returning um, to people's attention for a variety of reasons every few years. And I decided to, in a sense, bring her, to resurrect her and bring her back to life to answer some questions about why some people resort to violence in uh, trying to achieve justice. If you have a moment where democracy breaks down, profoundly wealthy corporations have a lot of control, then it becomes very difficult to try to strategize some kind of resistance. So I wanted to raise the question of why someone as intelligent and perceptive and um, profoundly well-informed as Ulrike Meinhof was, why she would take up uh, a gu guns against the state. So I'm trying to use a, a moment from the past to comment on the present, really just to raise some questions about violence. Also, we, we live in a very, very violent moment, and those uh, aspects of violence seem very acceptable to people. I wanted to look at different kinds of violence um, and why people have such different notions of why one kind of violence ex is acceptable and another kind of violence is not. There's a lot of violence performance that really couldn't capture the audience That project was begun in 1988. In the early 80s, none of my students knew what conceptualism was. And when I say conceptualism, I mean the art that was developed between, let's say, the mid-60s and the mid-70s. A move away from materiality, a move toward an emphasis on um, concept, a move toward um, the incorporation of a variety of media that hadn't been used before in art, the incorporation of um, what we call time-based work, and so on. I felt there was a kind of complete amnesia in the um, uh, early 80s, mid 80s, and then suddenly in the 90s there was a kind of return, toward the late 80s and 90s there was a return of conceptualism, but it was coming back in a very superficial way. I wanted as an artist to establish a kind of commentary on this return, which I felt was um, being um, sort of taken out of history and coming back um, as a style in almost a kind of consumerist way. Out of that, I came up with this idea of having, of asking artists, not that I knew personally, but that I knew were old enough to have witnessed this, some of this, these um, artworks in person, and, um, and asking them to each speak about one work, which was not their own. My strategy was to try to slow down the return, uh, create a kind of commentary on the way that something is historicized. And I wanted to use the fallibility of memory to um, really to challenge the, 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 the kind of official histories that were being written at the time. I taped these artists, um, I taped their hands while they were speaking, and then I separated out sound and image in order to create an experience for the spectator 
um, that was not coherent in a way. So there was a kind of border that was crossed there. And uh, that was charming and interesting. And I didn't allow them to identify themselves because I didn't want the spectator to be overly affected by the authority of the speaker. Well, one thing that was very striking was that most of the artists chose to speak about performative works. It must have uh, been easier to retain the memories of these works. And I don't think that describes the period. I think that it's overdetermined in that regard because I think that's the way that human memory works. But uh, she, she did pick up some of these dolphins and began to, uh, to put a voice, a voice... By the way, the other thing is that, that I think is important to say about that work is that by using my own definition of conceptual art, I was um, able to incorporate the work of women in a way that the retrospective shows that were being done at the time did not. The curators who did those exhibitions, by defining conceptualism in their own way, along, uh, generally along uh, the uh, parameters of certain mediums that women were not working with, managed to make it a history of men. So, although it was not my intention to rewrite this history to include women, my definition, which um, I just came up with because it seemed to me um, to cover the period most broadly, without my controlling it at all, for about half the projects being uh, described to be by women. And that is radically different from the two big shows that had been done I think in the late 80s and in the 90s that tried to um, uh, uh, create a kind of um, overview of conceptualism which had, you know, maybe 5% women in it.